Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I create dogs' noses in pastel. It's something I get asked about all the time, and that's understandable, as dogs' noses are very unusual shapes. And in this video, I'm going to talk you through how to create one very black, shiny nose, and also a pinky brown nose, which is another common colour of nose that I get to paint a lot with dog portraits. Now, if you're struggling with the initial shape of the noses, check out my other video, which I've already released, on how to draw dogs' noses from different angles. That'll take you back to basics with the sketching and explain some easy ways you can look at the anatomy and figure out what's going on. But this video is all about colour and form and how to create that 3D nose that looks really wet. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe here on YouTube for all my future content. And also check me out over on my Patreon channel for my full list of full length tutorials, reference images to work from and lots more. So let's get started on the first nose and it's a lovely black shiny nose from quite an unusual angle. And you can see I've blocked in a little bit of black already and I'm just strengthening that outer line of the nose. I can always come back in with my lighter colours and really strengthen the shape of the far side of the nose there. So this is an interesting angle to look at. You can see that all the light is coming down on the top of the nose. The front of the nose towards the bottom is quite dark. And I start to layer in some of my more vibrant, darker colours like the blues and the teal blues that I've used throughout the coat of the dog. So it looks a bit odd to come in with a really vibrant colour. But I've used some of these blues throughout the rest of the dog and I want to tie that in in the nose as well. Just blocking in with a little bit of Faber-Castell black the dark nostril areas, some of the darker shadows towards the bottom of the nose. So I want to get my darker colours in first. That's the key with everything that I paint in pastel. Make sure that I've got a nice depth of colour down first before I start coming in with any of those highlight colours. So as you would expect with a black nose, I do use a lot of black especially in these first layers to make sure that I have enough depth down there before adding any lighter colours. So the great thing about pastel is that you can work from dark to light, trust that your lighter colours will go on top of your dark colours. On this I'm using pastel matte paper and that holds a lot of layers of pastel. You can always apply your lighter colours on top of your dark colours. So coming in with a little bit of the teal blue that I've used elsewhere in the dog, picking out some of the subtle highlights in that shadow area on the nose. And they look very bright when I do it at this stage, but you can blend it in, make it much more subtle. At this stage, I'm just trying to see some colors on the nose. With any wet object, you're going to get a lot of reflection. So I'm looking for any of those highlights that serve as a little bit of reflective colour. So purples and blues and browns, all great colours for working on dogs' noses. And I'm still using the big sticks at this stage. I do make use of pastel pencils. I like to use Faber-Castell. But most of my early work on a piece like this will be done with the bigger sticks, blocking in larger areas of colour. And just coming in with a little bit of highlight colour to start catching where some of those smaller highlights are formed around the nostrils. And you can see how easily that the light colour goes on top of my jet black. And I can come back in with the sharp point of a pencil just to neaten those areas and even shape my reflections a little bit better. So much of the fiddly work can be done with the pencils. But I do love the softness of the big sticks. 
and the strength of the color that you get from them. So a bit more work just to darken down this front face of the nose. And you can see how those hairs around the edge of the nose are going to sprout out from that dark area. So it's a common thing that I see quite often with people just starting out. It's a good thing not to be too heavy handed with pastels, but at the same time, you do want to build up enough darkness in the beginning to allow your work to have real contrast. So don't be scared to put down some really dark and some really vibrant colors in the beginning as your next layers are going to be helped along so much by that. So blotting in in a really dark, purpley navy colour from Terry Ludwig there, one of my dark Terry Ludwigs. Just a nice alternative to black so I'm not constantly using just black. I'm thinking of ways to warm up the black area. And also trying to add a little bit of texture along the top of the nose before starting to add any of the highlight colours. So I really need this darkness to shine through my next layers. But now I start to come in with some highlight colour. And you can see that the light is really heading along the top of the nose. So I know I can go quite bright with my highlights there. There are only certain places on the front of the nose catching any light at all, so I have to be careful with my colour choices in the highlights. On the top I can afford to go much brighter on the highlights. But then I also want to taper the top of the nose gradually into the fur, and you can see I'm doing that with some smaller marks towards the top of the nose. So they don't tend to have a hard line along the top of the nose. Most dog breeds their nose kind of uh, tapers off into the fur that meets the top of the nose. So it's worth paying particular attention to that area as you don't want your nose to have a hard outline along the top. So it's not just white that I'll pick up to make some of my highlight colours. Some of these lighter lilac-y colours, these lighter tints I'm using to create some of the highlights on the nose that aren't quite so bright as the others. So you don't want to just pick up white as your highlight colour, as everything will look too bright. You need a little more tonal range in your light tints. And that's where I love my Unison pastels most. They have such a beautiful range of the light colours, your off-whites, your light greys, in every type of hue, both warm and cold. So I'm always looking for those off-white colours as my highlights. Just firming up the shape of the nostril area before coming in with a little bit of highlight there. And you can see the highlight in there is not as bright as on the top of the nose. So again, I'm using a little bit of that lilac colour. And that's a much more subtle highlight for inside the nostril. So again, beware of your use of white. I'm coming in here just to lighten the lilac colour that I've applied. But I don't want to lighten it too much. I still want it to be a good bit duller on the highlights on the top of the nose. And because this nose is so dark, that little highlight tells us so much information about the shape of the nostril. 
So I'm really particular about getting those highlights just right. We can't really see a lot of detail in around the nostrils apart from these highlights. And when I'm painting a dog's nose, I also have in mind that I don't want it to be completely photorealistic. I'm never aiming to capture every single little dimple and highlight on the nose. I really want to capture it a little more quickly than that, a little more loosely than that, and give an impression of the nose. After all, when you look at an entire portrait together with all of the features, if you were looking at the dog in real life, your eyes couldn't possibly focus on every part of their face at once, so I'm aiming for a, a more impressionistic view of a nose. With a lot of detail, yes, but not aiming to get every single dot in the right place. And now I'm going back across those highlights on the nose, picking out the odd area where I can see a really bright highlight, trying to be a little random about that so that it looks a little more natural. And also using my lovely pan pastel tool here just to soften some of what I've done, soften some of the little marks that I've made. And just where the highlights start to taper off around the edge into the shadow, I'm using a bit of a duller highlight colour here just to suggest that light creeping over the edge of the nose. So the shadows don't end in a sharp line either. But you can see how little pastel pencil I've needed in this so far. Those bigger sticks can give you small marks when you need them. And then really you just need your pastel pencils at the very end to come in and make those minor adjustments. And now just a few of the brightest highlights where the light's really catching the top of the nose. And you can see by using the softer pastel for this, I get such a bright mark. It's so much brighter than the other tones that I have already on the nose. So I can come in at the very end and be very selective about where I add those brightest of highlights. And that's really the key to getting a good wet looking black nose. Be really selective about where you add those little bits of highlight and don't be scared to go really dark to begin with to give you that extra bit of contrast. So now we'll make a start on that pinky brown nose. Another common colour of nose that I get to work on. A lot of dog breeds with this colour of nose. And similar to the other nose, I've started in by blocking in some of my darks, mostly black there towards the bottom. You can see that there's a lot of darkness to the right side of the nose. But then I come in with some more fleshy colours to block in the rest of the nose. So it's quite an unusual angle this as well, we just get that one open nostril to the side. It's a bit of an easier nose to sketch out, this one actually, because you don't have to worry about getting both nostrils. So just choosing some of my nice red earth unisons. And blocking in a bit of the main colour of the nose. So I don't have to go quite as dark on this nose like I do on the black nose. But the same principle applies. I want to have enough darkness and contrast down there first before I come in with any of those highlight colours. 
So I'm using darker browns around the edges along with those fleshy colours and again trying to almost melt the top of that nose into the beginning of the fur up the muzzle. So just making sure that I've got enough depth and darkness down around this shadowy area of the nose. And now coming in with more of that rich purpley brown tone. And with some of my fleshy mid-tone, that BE23, starting to pick out that little rim around the edge of the nose there. So as with the other nose, still just blocking in, no fine details yet, just trying to block in some colour. Even inside the nostril here, just trying to pick out the main shape of that highlighted area. So it's a different colour palette for this nose. The same principles apply, trying to get your dark tones down first and then really consider what your highlight colours should be. So try and be brave with your colour choices, especially when you're painting noses. Sometimes you find the most unusual colours on there. If it's a wet nose, as I said before, you're going to find reflective colour. But with a brown or pink nose like this, you find all sorts of shades of purples and pinks. If you're painting the nose of a Weimaraner, for example, they have a really unusual coat colour and nose colour. You might even add in little bits of blue here and there. So really search for those extra tones that are going to help bring out the 3D quality of your nose. And the nostrils are always so important. They give real shape and form to the overall nose. And you'll always notice if you've got one slightly askew. So be sure to check out my part one of this tutorial as I take you through some of my most popular angles of dog noses. And I point out some common bits of anatomy that you find on most dogs noses and hopefully that will help you get those proportions right. So now we're into a little bit of pastel pencil work just towards the left side of the nose here. You can see that again the nose doesn't end in a hard outline. It sort of tapers off into the fur. So I'm using my pastel pencil just to soften that outer line of the nose. Then I can even use one of my lighter coloured pencils to pick out a couple of little areas of highlight around that rim. and adding that all-important little bit of highlight inside the nostril. Doing it with my pastel pencil. I don't want it to be too bright, so it shows up just a nice amount using the pencil. 
and I can add some tiny little dots of moisture in there. And when it comes to the pastel pencils, then you can see I can really neaten up my edges, make sure that I've got the proportions and the angle of the lines just right. Even though my initial sketch will have these proportions pretty well worked out, there's always flexibility in the pastel stages where you can make minor adjustments. So just building up a bit more of the texture on the nose. You can see, again, I'm using these little dots, using the bigger soft stick. And again, not being too concerned about getting them in the exact right places. I think my aim when I'm painting a portrait is to give a really close impression of it, something that will look really 3D from afar. But I do enjoy my marks being a bit looser once you get up close to the painting. And that's one of the reasons that I like to avoid the pastel pencils until a bit later in the process, as I find I get very fiddly very precise with the pencils. I can definitely be a little looser and a little more painterly with the soft sticks. So just adding in a little mid layer, starting to come up towards the highlights here, adding more texture to the nose. And as the nose starts to come down into the shadows, some of those highlight colours will cool off a little. And that's why I've picked up this lilac grey. Just to enhance the idea that the nose is disappearing off into the shadows. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. That's two common types of noses that I get to paint, two common colours of noses, but both with a very similar technique, always working from dark to light, trying to capture the main texture and overall form without getting too crazy about the, the minor details. So I hope you find this useful, and next time you come to paint a pet portrait, you'll get that nose just right. If you haven't already, please do subscribe here on YouTube. And it's also really easy to join all my patrons over on my Patreon channel for my full list of tutorials and lots more. But thanks for watching and until next time, happy pastling. <laughs>